Oh uh, yeah, they are. They got a weird name. We have to come up with doing two things. It's um, hold on, it's, yeah. It's at vim underscore tv. Ah. All right, we're live on Vim. And I've tweeted. I tweeted. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Well, it's good morning here. It's good afternoon there. Hello. hello. Just a global hello to everybody. So the steaming pile's back. Uh, I'm John Spaulding, and we have Pensive with us. Hey, Pensive. My partner, Howdy. My partner in crime for our new venture. How are you today? I'm okay. I forgot to eat my Jaffa cake before we started, so I may have to eat a Jaffa cake along the way. I, I have, my... Well, you'll have to show that to me in, in if you have it next to you. I have no idea what that is. A Jaffa cake? This oh, is okay. a chocolate uh, biscuit with a layer of um, like orange jelly and chocolate on top. And they're made by McVitie's, the real ones, but these are the cheap imitations from Aldi. Um, <laughs> We, we we started going. Do you have the same in the states? The yeah, we have. We have stores that copy all the brands. We that's our only store that we primarily shop at is Aldi. Oh, you got ah yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so we have these. I, there's these Girl Scout cookies called Tag Alongs. They're uh, uh -huh. like a, a wafer. Then they have a layer of peanut butter, and they're covered in chocolate. And so we always buy the the fake Tag Alongs from Aldi. I think they must have a very big team of, of lawyers because they run close to the line. Oh, yeah. All the brands, I mean, we have Branston Pickle, and they do one called Bramwell Pickle. Exactly the same design of the yep. logo, et cetera, et cetera. Just change the name. Yeah, we yeah. The, there's Ritz Crackers, R-I-T-Z, and their version of those is called Savor It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'd love to be a lawyer there. <laughs> like, yep. How close to the line can we fly on this one? Uh, they've been doing it for years. They're they're competing now with um, with Whole Foods because they're uh, ma they're banning pesticides and they're uh, and they're yes. going organic. So yeah, they're doing more organic here as well. I mean, the, we've got our main supermarkets: uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's, uh, which I think is part of Walmart now. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're the traditional ones. There's four of them, and now Aldi and Lidl from Germany have come in and they're really really cutting into the market because uh, they're a good 20 30 percent cheaper than uh, the main supermarkets right right yep so uh, yeah go for it okay uh, to be quite honest the products generally chase taste much the same so uh, they really do they really do and their produce has gotten really good over the last I would say five to ten years they've made a focus on that so that's good yeah. That's good. But the it fun helps. bit is they always have those aisles down the middle where they just seem to put random stuff yeah. that they want to clear. <laughs> Do yeah. you have the same thing? Oh, yeah. And it, every week is just different, and it's random, and uh, you never know what you're going to get. So uh, Yeah, we've gotten toys there for the kids, you know, and then we'll try to go back and get another one, and you'll never see them again. No chance. Yeah. No chance, but... Uh, it, being a buyer, I guess they just go to wholesalers, and the wholesalers say, oh, we got a load of these, we're doing cheap. Okay, we'll have those then, yeah. Yep. And if the, if the price is right, they'll take them. But the, the, the slight downside is when you actually want something particular, it's a total roll of the dice whether you're going to get them. Yeah. We went on Sunday and we wanted to get salt, which is a fairly basic commodity, and mm -hmm. they had no salt in the whole store. Really? But I guess they couldn't get a big enough deal on it. I don't know. A wow. Big enough deal, and they had none at all. So there we go. 
So anyway, that was a bit of a diversion from the start of the show. No, 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 no. That fits in well with the name of the show. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's on the agenda, John? What have we got to, so, to talk about today? So I had we had listed uh, four or five things to talk about. What I thought we would do is just give some time or give uh, 15, 10, 15 minutes for each one. Content onboarding, Steam news, personal development, and tribes and communities. I. Th- you want to start with content? We had a good discussion about content earlier. Which yes. one kind of pulls at you this morning? Uh, I, I, I mean, two sort of starting points. One, I, I, I've gone back in the last uh, uh, two or three weeks, was it, to start doing the Steam News again, which is the, the sort of daily-ish compilation of... Um, uh, the main things going on on the Steam blockchain, which is is one part of it. The other part, which is is captivating my interest, let's say at the moment, is the jolly old coronavirus, which um, yeah is is just bubbling up, and uh, our our media here is starting to take note of it. But you know, if some celebrity does something ridiculous, it gets knocked off the headlines. But uh, otherwise, it's getting a bit of attention. And uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a prepper at heart. That's where I, I come from. Mm-hmm. And um, the uh, have we got chat on here? We have yeah. The uh, the fun one. I don't know. Do, do you like fun graphs and maps, John? I do. Well, I, I'm going to put a link here. I, I've got the screen share thing on here, but I'll put the link for and you, and you you have a look at it and decide if you want to bring it up because it's a <laughs> it, it's a fun one. All right. It, it's from John Hopkins University, so it's, it's sort of bona fide. It's not some uh, extreme. Yeah, uh, so it's legit. Uh, yeah, and, and it's taking longer and longer to load because when you when it comes up, you'll see why. Okay. It's it's the main place that people are going to, and uh, the bit you want to look at is there's a, the map in the middle, and then you want to cast your eye very quickly down to the bottom left hand corner. Don't dwell there too long. It may burn your eyeballs or, or get you slightly worried, I think would be the phrase. Look down the bottom left. You, you can... You got the bottom left? It's still loading. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it should come quicker for you. You're in the stage. All right, here, so it? let's see here. I'm going to share it, too. Just, I'm going to share it without uh, knowing what I'm sharing. <laughs> Beware. So. Viewer discretion Oh, advised. that's fine. Ah, that's fine. There's only, there's only one person watching. Ah, right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll interpret the, the figures uh, once you see it. I need a bit of my Jaffa cake. The Wuhan coronavirus there. said bottom left. Yeah. Oh, total confirmed cases. It's still loading. Yeah, this site is getting very, very popular. Gotcha. And this is, and uh, you said this is from Johns Hopkins? John, yeah, they're compiling the official stats coming out of WHO, uh, CDC, etc. There's about five sources they've got. Okay. Um, I hope it loads for you. Me too. you got uh, decent bandwidth. I do. I, it's because we have a lot of other stuff going on too. I think it's. It would probably be easier if you shared it, and did a screen share in Zoom. Uh, I, I don't know how to do that. So, um, do you have the link open on, on a web page? Yeah, I'm on my my business computer at the moment, so I probably you can't bring it do up. That, okay. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, it um, is. I don't know how long it'll take if if it's going to load or not. Yeah. I mean, do, do you want to just leave it loading in the background and? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's um, quite quite interesting when it comes up. The uh, is, is it getting much media coverage over your your way? It's starting to. It's starting to. It's it's getting media coverage and conspiracy coverage. So that's good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Most of the conspiracy like coverage tied, tied to Soros. It's already tied to Soros in some people's minds. And yeah, I, I personally think the conspiracy theory coming out is actually in the wrong direction and actually false flagging it myself but mm-hmm. there's a bit some more to the story that 
uh, I'll, I'll mention in due course if it's appropriate. But yeah, it's, it's uh, some good stuff going on. Uh, I mean, the essence of of what's going to cap on that can up come up on there is is there's now four and a half thousand uh, confirmed cases, a bit over a okay. hundred deaths. Wow. Um, but the issue is that is way more important than that is it, it's doubling every two and a half days. Oh my goodness. There's all, yeah, and there's already been confirmed cases at at airports or in in the states. Yeah. So and, and this is after a lockdown in China where most of the main cities are locked down. Mm -hmm. uh, travel bans, schools closing, Beijing has closed all the schools and universities for another week. Um and uh the old doubling thing, if you do the maths, I was just talking with someone earlier who did some uh, more exact maths than me, and um, on the current figures, it reaches around 100,000 by the end of February, and then zooming way up into the millions uh, by the end of March. Wow. Uh, each night, the uh, figures, well, for our time, it's 1 a.m. Uh, UTC, approximately the Chinese authorities uh, release their official figures and for the past few days I've been thinking ah oh, you know yesterday's was an aberration it's not going to go up so much but every day it's been going and, and the rate of increases uh, increasing uh, rate of growth is increasing at the moment so it's now about every two and a half days the number doubles and that's and been that consistent get... how long has that been how uh, long has it been the doubling first, like that first cases were from just before Christmas and then um, it was about 10 days ago that it started you know getting traction and uh, yesterday it went from 2700 to 4500 approximately wow. overnight uh, and it's whether they're gonna be able to contain it and the the slightly more scary thing is that most uh, epidemiological experts around the world are saying the figures are massively under underreported by the Chinese authorities because they don't want to scare people too much um, several universities etc one in Britain Imperial College which is a big university here uh, they're estimating that the figures are underreported by a factor of 10 they reckon there's about 40,000, not 4,000, because they're doing the sort of epidemiological modeling of the That's of ma the That's massive underreporting. Uh, it is, but of course, from, you know, China is China. It's the, not the, world, the world's greatest uh, model of openness and <laughs> freedom of speech, right? but nothing is China. But it's, it's not one of their strong suits, let's say. Right. So, um, uh, you know, it is It's not not massively difficult to believe that um, but from a you know world stage sort of position so i brought uh, it up you should be able oh, to see go. it now yeah that, there's there's ground zero in the middle wuhan and uh, around that that's where it started that was a that was well, that was a city of 11 million people um and it's now totally locked down um they're they're building you can see the videos online to cope with it they're building whole new hospitals building in like three yeah in three weeks prefabricated hospitals they're just bringing in they oh. built the first one uh, i think it was just finishing today or something um in about three weeks and they're working on another one i think they reckon they're doing them every two to three weeks to cope they're they're bringing in um vast numbers of medical personnel from around the uh, country uh, every province, I think, has now got it, if I'm uh, correct. In my yeah, my friend just went to Beijing for work. Oh, bad like, timing. Yeah, like I would say probably about two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago. And he, they're, they're in lockdown. They've been in lockdown. Oh, yeah, yeah, bad timing, that one. Uh, of course, supplies of, of medical disposables are becoming impossible. I mean, most cities around the world, I saw Brooklyn just had a thing on Twitter that there are no masks less left to be had in Brooklyn, Brooklyn in, in the States. Um, and that's happening all over the place. Nearly everywhere in, in uh, Britain is uh, starting to sell out. I, I ordered some on Amazon about four days ago. Uh, the totally fun fact of that was is they were being shipped from China. <laughs> due to arrive to it. Whether they'll arrive or not, I doubt. <laughs> 
doubtful because my feeling is the Chinese authorities might say, uh, hang on, I think we need them here first. Right. Um, and I got in just before the prices started to hike. I found a prepping site that released some more uh, a couple of days ago in Britain. And the guy I know. <laughs> and he was obviously having a field day because he was going through his site and everything before was just like plain descriptions and he was like tagging on the end and these are great for virus protection and these are great for virus protection so he's selling sort of kitchen gloves for virus protection or whatever um being slightly dodgy in the <laughs> descriptions because he was selling any old masks oh yeah oh paint, yeah painting and claiming they would protect you against virus <laughs> none of which was true but oh my heck, goodness they were flying off the shelves so he put out an email and within about three hours they'd totally gone you gotta love grifters. They'll find. Oh, they yeah. can Why spin not? anything. Why not? And we have uh, the. I have the U.S. cases here. It looks like there's Chicago and and Phoenix. Yeah. Interesting. So far, every one of the people that infected have been of Chinese origin. Got um, yeah okay. As far as I know, but uh, it's it's. It's heavy stuff, and uh, when you do those numbers, you know you see that graph down the bottom left. Um, depending, um, it's it's a fairly scary graph down there, isn't it? I mean, it needs the confirmed a bit of cases. Yeah, it needs a bit of uh, plateauing out soon. Otherwise, that's uh, that's that's the thing of movies down there. Yeah, and like you said, if it's if it's doubling, that is not you good. Know, if that had, if that had been on uh, Alex Jones or something, it's like oh yeah, okay, that's Alex Jones, but you know that, that's on John Hopkins University site. So mm -hmm. One sort of feels it's probably. I don't think they'd want to compromise their academic credibility to uh, put up. No, and uh, and just the fact that they've put together a site that it enables global information systems information and in, re yeah. in real time is uh, is a testament to the seriousness of the issue. Yeah. I wonder what will come of it. I hope it doesn't get worse, but. Like you said, it might. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Now, now I need it. Now I'm wondering if I need to go get a mask. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> okay. thinking about it, and then I'm like, oh, you know what? It, it just little things about like taking your kids to school. Yep. And like going out, you're you. It makes you nervous to to do stuff like that. The the, the slightly or not slightly the, the the very sort of scary and uh, worrying bit is how how much this is going to induce well in effect racism and xenophobia I, i've seen in britain already people tweeting there was a guy up in north britain he was tweeting um about his local chinese restaurant chinese restaurants very popular in britain i don't know if they are in the states and he said oh the family that runs it have gone off to china for their uh, to see their family for the new year because that was the other thing of course this goes over chinese new year he said i'm not going there when they come back you know, right. so you're going to get that that sort of twist. Yep. Although it's happening. I mean, in, in Swansea in South Wales, um, they they cancelled the Chinese New Year celebrations uh, the other day. So I mean, it's it's going to start, you know, picking up its own uh, momentum. I think. Yeah, I think that's tough. It, it, that's a tough call. It, it when you have that kind of situation and you, you can tie it back to a location. Yeah, you it's, know, it's unfortunate, it, but I don't know. It's gonna I don't happen. know how it's going to play out, but, you know, you, I, I'm a keen watcher of uh, the good old apocalyptic-type movie. And, uh, you know, you watch those movies over and over, and the storylines have various twists and turns, but they're all of a common ilk. Um, at, at some point in the, in the human's history, um, is it going to happen? Um, you don't know. I mean, uh, what's his name? Bill Gates predicted only six months ago that um, there was going to be a pandemic. Uh, brackets. He does have full disclosure. He does have substantial financial um, interest in vaccine producing com companies. Aside from that, right? He did predict a few months ago. Isn't that? Well, I think that's where conspiracy theories come, right? When you have Indeed, a, yeah. a billionaire say that, and then it happens, and then he has, you know ties to pharmaceutical yeah, I mean, companies to that make vaccines because yeah it's very easy to twist it because his prediction was that it was going to be a coronavirus the same as this and people said wow yeah he knew what's coming but you know coronavirus for anyone in the scientific world is probably one of the most likely ones to, for it to do so it's no no big deal sars was a coronavirus a worrying thing about sars 
Um, I'm so, not exactly. so, so coronaviruses, ha- they can be different kinds. Like that, yeah, it's, it's more a, of a higher level of a vir- of a name of a virus. It, it's a particular family of viruses, as far as I know. Gotcha. I think okay. They're called coronaviruses just because physically they look like they've got little crowns on them. I think. Um, but SARS, which was the last big outbreak of a coronavirus, which was 2002, 2003, based in China again. Um, that was a big thing. I, I don't know if that, again, if that was big news in the States, but it was a big thing when it came out, SARS. And um, that ran for a course of about a year. And the total confirmed infections in that, um, in that outbreak was just over 8,000. Okay. And look at the number we've got here after a few yeah. weeks. Um, <laughs> that uh. 8,000 is going to be surpassed in by the weekend. Um, and that had, um, if I recall, 800 deaths. So it's about a 10% morbidity rate, mortality rate. This one currently is getting about a 3% mortality rate, apparently, but it's still early days. But it, it's reported that the SARS event had an impact, a negative impact of between 1% and 2% of China's GDP because of the massive loss of, you know, air, airlines are you know, being wiped out, so oh, no wow. one's flying, etc. And so their GDP was much smaller then, of course, in 2003. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what impact is this going to have on the GDP of China? And of course, then if if China's GDP is impacted, the rest of the world is because, you know, you go into a shop, I guess, similar in the States to here, you go in an electronic store, probably 90% of the products in that store come from China. Right. The, they're gonna find that they're not getting resupplies because everything's going into lockdown so mm-hmm. therefore the stores in britain uh, pc world or whatever we've got here are going to start not having products to sell so that will impact them as well so it's, it's it can be scary i mean it might all be cleared up who knows but you know it's it doesn't look like they've got it under control at the moment to be honest. check back at that graph uh, that page in 24 hours, John, and see what you think. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. <laughs> but um, I'm checking. Yeah. Um, I'm checking the the Vim stream to see if there's any comments. Yeah, it's hard to tell on my phone. It doesn't look like there are, but there's a couple people watching. So, hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your upvotes. We appreciate it. Mute that. So yeah. Good. Um, there's no good segue to next, but I did. <laughs> I, I did notice that you had started back up your Steam News. You're um, you're done Indeed, with your yeah. hiatus. You you double down. You said, uh, "I'm not going to take this kind of harassment. I'm going to do whatever I want on the blockchain, yeah. and and people can't tell me what I can and can't curate." And so you started back up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it uh, it's intensive. To, I mean, I was doing it every day. I'm, I'm doing it about five days a week now partly because i'm trying to you know not do it constantly and partly it varies some days there's just not enough worthwhile stuff to report sure um and you know some sometimes before i was having to force an issue and find stuff that was really quite Mm -hmm. (laughs) quite irrelevant to put in but you know there's usually a stuff enough to fill um and use at least every day or every other day and uh, i've sort of also added some bits in i i to try and broaden it out i i'm doing an update on the steam proposal system every day um just to try and get people to catch on to what's going with that for better or worse uh, okay still steam foundation not a lot going on there I'm trying to throw up when people start new communities I'm not quite sure whether they're gonna run very far putting a featured contest of the day because you know there's loads of contests out there and uh, then diary dates as well i used to do a separate sort of event thing but i've merged it into a diary dates plus down the bottom a little bunch of stats that are always useful to see what's going on so uh did you say the steam is it the steam proposal system yeah that's the one where you can go and get funding um you have to get past a massive hurdle of what they call the return proposal so you've got to be in the in with the right crowd let's say to, yeah and to, you really have to, to know up. your steam game too oh yes yeah, right like yeah. you have to and so what you said what's the what's the back proposal or, or what what did you call it is that the one that they give back it, to you uh, the return proposal is a like a false uh, threshold where gtg put it in and he it's got a massive vote on it so uh if you can't get above that it, it has a, a, a 
they do it it sets with 10,000 SPD or something so it if it, it will absorb all the steam all the SPD coming out and put it back into it and so only if you get above that do you get a share of the action if you're below that you get nothing and so that it's wow. being used okay. as a control valve basically on who gets funded um yeah, some decent amounts of money are coming out there I'll, I'll let people decide whether they think it's going in the right place or not i mean it's it's a pretty locked down if, if you look down the bottom of the list you know you'll see names that are less well known and they're getting no traction on it the well-known names are getting traction list gotcha <laughs> um so yeah so from this looking at what i'm sharing on my screen um where would where would you suggest people like kind of focus if they wanted to to check up on those projects is that the uh, that address there joti jotiska julie that actually, github yeah that go shows you that's i mean steam peak and various other ones also do it but that is in my mind slightly better because uh the way it's arranged it just works a little bit better um but um yeah if you flick over into there you'll see how the proposals are arranged okay there's about um uh, 70 proposals or something been put forward now i just clicked on it we'll see how so at the top here it shows the total fund and the amount that it's got available each day so it's got 200 2390 spd so that's about two thousand dollars to disperse at the moment um the ones that are currently in green getting it they've passed the threshold they're absorbing about 700 of it so about a third of it is being used at the moment the rest just gets recycled into the pot okay um, uh, but yeah you'll see one and then you can get this return proposal which see has a massive amount and therefore it soaks up all the rest of the available money and just puts it straight back in the pot so you've got to get above that 17 million sp which is a heck of a lot of sp voting um to get in in play you know what this stuff i mean this blows my mind right like i'm on steam and i post a picture <laughs> i do yeah. a live stream i say hello everyone da, da 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 and i rant and rave this is actual like people doing good work on the blockchain and some yeah. you know like some of it i don't there's words in here that i don't even know no i mean it's big money there i mean you know some of these uh um you know like how he's been testing the uh he's the guy who developed steam p uh, steam press mm -hmm. he's getting um what is 180 spd so it's about 150 dollars a day and it's it's continuous oh wow uh, um you know, I, I, I have slightly in two minds about that because I, I thought that's what the witnesses were paid for to do right. the testing of hard forks, but I'm sure he's doing good work. I like um, Steam Press, though. I do have a couple of WordPress blogs, and I like the integration. Yeah, I mean, they've got good stuff going. They've got, um, you know, onboarding and referrals and stuff they're building up. Um, so, you know, Do you know much about – I see Steam onboarding here. Do you know much about Steam onboarding at all? Uh, it was initiated a year ago by a nomad soul and chorus kate i think chorus kate has taken a back seat now eric uh, a nomad soul is the main driver of it its idea was to build a, a sort of definitive go-to site for people to land on and learn about steam and it's in i think 10 languages and stuff very high level thing um, gotcha. i'm never quite sure with those sort of definitive sites because unless steam it inc redirects people to those definitive sites i'm not entirely sure how the, the whole thing connects together but the money they're raising is to do more of that basically more videos and so on and so forth is steam it inc um are they is that still the one that, that most users go to or it's i would i would figure it's it's a little it, bit more decentralized by now it is a bit but not um, they still have the lion's share of the cake, so to speak. I don't know. Uh, you guys, you see my Steam Peak. I don't know why anyone would use any front, uh, Steam front end Peak other is, than Steam Peak. Yeah, Steam Peak is up and coming. I mean, you can see the Alexa stats to see how they compare. I love at it. What, at one point, Steam it, Inc. traffic was dropping quite significantly, and Steam Peaks was raring away. And, and when I was doing the last round of Steam News, uh, I mean, I've talked with Steam Peak, and, and it was predicted that Steam Peak would overtake 
um, steamit.com by about February, but I, I don't, I think steamit Inc has stopped, steamit.com has stopped dropping so much and steamit peak has stopped growing so much so that the numbers aren't going to coincide just yet. Darn. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, we got Steam a comment here is... from Sergeant Dan, though. He said, ah, hi, Sarge. said Steam Peak's great. He also said maybe your next Steam News post you might include or consider including uh, the Redfish contest being sponsored and promoted by Steam Terminal. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Sergeant Dan, drop me a uh, message that will remind me then and I'll pop it in. I think he just did that. All ah, right. Okay, I'll look out for that <laughs> no. one. No, I meant like here. <laughs> oh, I say, ah, yeah, yeah. I, usually, my point of reference is in Discord. So right, I, right, right. Yeah. You I'm hear that, Discord. Sergeant? Yeah. Put it in Discord. Yeah. Put me. Uh, send me a message, and that will remind me in Discord. He said it's quite posh. I'm assuming he's meaning proof of sharing. Ah, that right. Was the, yes. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. a uh, another Twitter? Yeah, kind I of think, uh, front. Acid Yo and Co are doing that. If yeah. I remember rightly, I like, I like Acid Yo. They, he's uh, pretty a pretty active at curation. They do good work. Yeah. So, like what else from this bar. Steam news? Is there anything else in here that we can feature uh, or we can talk scroll, through? So? Scroll down from the top, and we can just mm -hmm. pick up. Oh sure. Let's, let's go up to the top. I can't must admit, I, can't, I always forget from day to day. Review so. hunt launches yeah. so an all new review hunt. Yep, yeah, that's a big thing coming out tomorrow. Uh, uh, various tweaks and changes in it. I've, I've never actually used, you know, I've not actively got involved in um, Review Hunt. I did some stuff on Steam Hunt, but not on Review Hunt. I, I used Review Hunt. Uh, I, I did a couple of reviews on Review Hunt. It was, was uh, it, good? it was challenging. So it was good. I don't know if the reward matches the effort required. Mm. Um, but that's that's not why I did it. I did it because I wanted to be... I wanted to use it and see if it was a platform, but I don't have, um, I just didn't find enough new reviews in order to keep my interest to keep going, mm -hmm. right? It's always the same ones, and then with the way, it's like, it's it's not a, it's not a massive amount of work, but, you know, you have to, you have to do it, you have to do it within a certain time frame, they review it, and then, the, you know, the payout comes, like, two or three weeks later. By that time, I've already forgotten what what I was doing in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I had so, a little go with it when it when Steam Hunt first started, but I, I've not gone back to it. I've got to be honest. But uh, yeah, that's Review Hunt. A uh, second one there is a, another new game, which is interesting, a Sim City type game called Steam City, uh, which is just just bubbling up at the moment. Okay. Uh, I don't know a lot about it. You can buy cards to get involved. At a, I think it's almost pre-alpha at the moment, um, but that's uh, that's another new one coming up. Splinterlands, most days there's something to put in the news about Splinterlands. Uh, they were on TV, I think, yesterday, was it? Or they, they, were, they got some little bit of coverage in TV. Um, uh, there's one there you can go and vote for them on a poll to show support on Twitter. When I looked earlier, they were falling behind. They were more or less neck and neck with a Tron token, but... Yeah, when I did, when I voted yesterday, and they were only at like thirteen percent, and then yeah. I saw this uh, this morning. I think they were not neck and neck. They were like third, like like Tron Token had forty. They were at thirty. The other one had twenty. I think. Yeah, the gap had opened up a little bit when I looked at a wee while ago. Yep. Um, this other one, Hoppy, uh He's. I think it's a he. Uh, as uh, another vote to get Steam noticed on something called Cre uh, Crypto Mass Adoption app. I, I didn't know much about that, but pop that one in there. Usually they're just one click to vote and every little bit helps. Uh, Next Colony is still going along. I've, I've not played Next Colony. Um, I'm not a big game player, but uh, they launched a new thing for making ships faster. Hmm. E-Steam, uh, I'll not use that either actually, but they've got a new referral system. I love um, that app. Yeah, no, I've never used that. That is my go. That's my go-to phone app. I was using, um, I was using Partico for a long time, yeah, and yeah, then they stopped. Yeah, yeah, they stopped kind of updating it and stopped supporting it. And so I went to eSteam, and I, I mean, I couldn't be happier. I, I check eSteam all the time, a couple times a day. Do they, do they give you a vote when you? through them do you get a vote for using Eastern uh some of or? some posts I, I i'm not sure what they use uh for 
to, to, to determine the upvotes. I don't know if it's manual or if it's automated, but I did um, pictures in December for uh, Advent Countdown. And I would say, er, and I, I did a post each day with a different picture for 24 days. And I would say I got about 14 upvotes yeah. from them. Yeah. I haven't looked. I don't know if they have tokens. I haven't looked. To see, I, I think they have tokens as well. So you get a steam up boat, but you also get tokens. The um, Sergeant Dan says yeah. ADHD is very common on steam for sure. <laughs> so yeah, I was just reading the uh, steam peak comments as well. There's steam peak comments. Uh, sorry, the uh, comments on Vim rather. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. Just, well, good. You can read those. Then I don't have to. Yeah, I uh, forgot I had that window <laughs> open. I'll keep that over open over here so I have that space for both of them. Uh, oh, okay. um, Click track profit. Yeah, John's uh, John Golson's uh, thing. He, he's storming away with stuff now. Um, uh, I think click track track profit and Steam Leo. Uh, I mean, they're two very very active tribes. Uh, John has just done a link up with something called FirePay, mm -hmm. um, which is a payment integration thing. So you can actually sort of pay for things through it, which is pretty, uh, pretty good. Yeah, I think it, and he's a he's a fan and supporter of the show. So I will we'll definitely try to reach out to him and see if we can get him on a future episode and come talk some yeah, more about his does stuff. A, a two or three different shows, doesn't he himself? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I remember the names of them, but yeah, I think he does two or three a week. He, I, I know he does Crypto Mondays. Um, he does he a has sports his... one as well. Does he do a sports? Oh, does one? he? I haven't seen that one. I think maybe Sunday nights he does a sports show. Where does sure. he do it? Does he do it and then record it and then upload it? Um, he doesn't use Vim, does he? I thought he was on Vim, but I okay, I, he might I be paid a lot of be. attention to be quite honest. Um, yeah. I'm not entirely sure where he does it. I've seen seen them mentioned, but they're always right in the middle of the night for me, so I, I never get to see them. Um, yeah, but no, John is very active with CTP. Uh, Eco Train, I've uh, been going a while. I, I sort of know Eco Alex. Um, he's just started some non-violent communication workshops um, on Steam, which people can join in. And he's also involved in the Eco Village project. I don't know if you come across in Portugal, him and Orlev, they bought some land and they're actually building a steam powered eco village, which is pretty cool. Wow. And uh, Orlev, Michael, he does, he just started last two weeks ago, I think, a uh, one hour sort of podcast show on MSP on Friday evenings about the project. Um, and that's, that's an interesting one to, to hear about. That they, the stage they're at, they've got the land and they're just sort of looking for planning permission, or whatever, but something I'd never thought about, but in Portugal, very dry land surrounded by eucalyptus uh, forests or whatever they're called. And uh, fireproofing comes into play because of the risk of forest fires. Right. You have, have to have a forest, uh, you have to have a fireproofing plan to uh, show that, you know, you don't have a risk of getting burnt down, etc., which is something I'd never, well, so in, in wet Wales, that would never be <laughs> an issue for us to worry about fireproofing, luckily. <laughs> Although we did, when I first moved here, we uh, had lots of um, bracken, I don't, I don't know if there's another name, bracken fern in the fields and in the winter, in the summer, it's very dry. Um, and it, it encroaches it's a sort of invasive species that will just move across grassland and uh, take it over and uh, when it first moved <laughs> i thought i know what i'll do i'll set fire to it that will teach it a lesson oh my goodness <laughs> in the, so one evening in the middle of summer um i uh, i set fire to it i had it under control i mean it, it was in a <laughs> confined area and uh, it's totally under control but it put up a lot of smoke so one of my neighbors helpfully called the fire brigade <laughs> took a bit of explaining but there we go <laughs> but it, it was effective it did you get in trouble uh, no no i mean i i hadn't you know it was my land i wasn't burning someone else okay land, gotcha but, gotcha but, uh, you know, I'd set fire to the neighbour's field might have been a different issue, but, <laughs> but it's a general problem. I, uh, the neighbours do it. I mean, it's it's one of those invasive weeds that everyone is trying to get rid of. And I thought I'd teach it a lesson. 
that I did for about six months and it all came back again. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and the last story there is just a little uh, a little techie thing there from Archange. Uh, the SBS, the Steam proposal we talked about. Uh, next one down is the Steam Foundation. Ooh, not really sure where that's going. I mean, it's been going I now for a year. I was just going to ask you, is, did they, what is it they do here? I'm not sure I can give a diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Actually. No, I, I mean, yeah, I followed it for a while, and then it just got a little bit too. Uh, yeah, it's jogging along, but I mean, it, it, I haven't seen a lot come out of it. Um, I mean, yeah, shadows is uh, they're posting still their on minutes. It. Uh, yeah, although they haven't posted the one from last week's meeting. Assuming they have, they, they, I think they have meetings every Wednesday. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, let's move on on that one. <laughs> yeah. Community watch. I thought I'd throw that in just to try and keep track of various communities. I, I'm still struggling with communities. I had a little go of setting one up the other day. Um, yeah, I, but I, I have. You a, said you're I mean, struggling I'd, with it. Are you struggling with the concept of them, or you're struggling uh, the tech and the concept? I, I mean, the concept I like. I mean, it's it's a great idea to segment off. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's got to be strong enough to sustain bring itself people over from mm. facebook and the like and right I, I, you know it's got it's nowhere near fully featured enough to to even hint at people wanting to move from facebook and and if you don't bring people in all you're doing is taking a rather small steam community and dividing it up even more so you have a lot of mm -hmm. very very small communities as opposed to one small well, community. and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to fe feature i think if we feature tribes and communities and invite those people to come on to the show i think that that's one way that you can offset that that splintering is yeah. by having them tell their story and then you know because we do want it to be decent uh, a decentralized kind of area where people can find their tribe or find their community and and uh, meet up with like-minded folks so i think so long as we're highlighting them and 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 talking about them the right way that it it can be a good thing, but like you said, yeah. we need to be able to best support them so that they can get the development that they need to to be to bring I mean, on more mass adoption and and make them want to use those types of platforms. Yeah, I mean, communities are still early days, uh, and it's only Roadscape who's doing a great job, but there's only one of them. Uh, I mean, it's the sort of thing you probably need a te team of half a dozen people because once you put them out there. Uh, you know, I do it in my day job, but once you put something out there, you'll get more suggestions, tweets, comments, bugs, etc. than one person can feasibly deal with. And then you, you either, you know, you prioritize and upset some people, you get overrun or whatever, you, you know, you, you, it's just not enough to have one person. You, you need a team of people on that. So gotcha. Postscape is doing a gallant job, but he's, you know, he's up against it. Um, because lots of people say, hey, add this, oh, add this, oh, you need this, you need, oh, change it like that. And, you know, there's no way you're going to keep up with that. But yeah. that that is the reality. I mean, I, I looked at, um, I, I, to try it out, I set one up for Steam News the other day, but that, that was sort of a throwaway one. Uh, but I had thought of trying to do a prepping community because I'm, I'm sort of into prepping. But I looked at other prepping communities and I'm thinking, well, w what can I offer on here? to attract someone to come over from some other established prepping community right uh, you know we, we haven't got the numbers we haven't got the the features uh, the facilities and so on and so forth and I, I just couldn't think out of an angle of how i could win people over uh, and there's this 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 sort of <laughs> this weird thing on steam that you know everyone says oh it's not about the money we shouldn't make it out about earning and so on and so forth but then the trouble is 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 what so what is our unique selling point if you take that away right and that's what everyone talks about is earn rewards for your content yeah and and, it, and and you know the 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 um let's say the politically correct corner of steam in one way is oh we shouldn't be talking about the rewards but the the, the next question is so what do we talk about because it's not the features, because there's more features on every other one of these prepping communities I've looked at. Gotcha. It's not the numbers, because there's more numbers on every other one I've looked at. So what what is it we are actually going to pitch to get people to come over? And I, I can't answer that question. I don't know the answer. Masks, Other than the uh, sharing masks time from China. Sorry? Hot deals on masks from China? <laughs> Could be, yeah. Sergeant Dan says he is a community. 
Uh, and he hasn't figured out how to administrate it yet either. So it it, lo it looks like there's some similar people it, out there that are sharing that experience. It, uh, Sergeant Dan, I, I had a go, and it's, I think, what's the word? It's not quite as intuitive as I'd like it to be, to be quite honest. It's not terrible, but, you know, if you're, you know, if you've been in Facebook or somewhere like that, obviously it's had hundreds of people working on it for dozens of a dozen years or whatever now and they've got it slicked down and again that's the problem steam is trying to move into a market up against big players like that that can throw literally hundreds and hundreds of millions at it and we've got one guy roadscape gallantly trying to you know keep it all together so uh you know it, it will it will grow but it's going to take a heck of a lot of time gotcha um and um yeah i i, I haven't sussed out how i could get a community of people here yet um and you know other people I've seen. I think Slobber Chops is looking to do one for Urbex, Urban Explorers, and there's three or four big Facebook groups with you know tens of thousands of members. You know what do you say to someone that's happily involved in a, a, a community, a group on Facebook to win them over to come to Steam? Apart from that thing we're not supposed to tell people about is that you can earn a few quid, yeah. a few dollars. Um, and so it is a very very tricky one, uh, and I. I I have no idea the answer. Uh, you know, the the only the only entry point if you don't use the rewards is oh we're you know censorship free and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's only for one small segment. You know, the, the vast majority of people on on Facebook, etc., and in communities on you know general communities have no interest in decentralization if they know what it is. Uh, no interest in censorship resistance unless you're in that small segment where that's important maybe right. steam has to just major on that segment i don't know yeah it's interesting because it's like um facebook is like i look at my facebook feed and it's just a, a mosh of nothing and the algorithm it's the same thing i always know like we had we had kobe bryant die i don't know if you knew that or not yeah an nba yeah. player and immediately when i heard it on the news i'm like this is going to be my facebook feed everybody and their mom is going to act like they knew the guy and they're so traumatized by his passing. And I, you know, I understand that it's sad and that he was a global icon and stuff, but you can almost predictably guess what your Facebook feed is going to look like based on the news and who's going to show what. Yeah. So it's like, do we want that? I mean, we want users over here, but do we want everybody and their mom posting the same story from the USA Today? Yep. Right? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think we do. So it's an interest. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it should be more of a, it's a good question. It's a good thing to ponder for, for onboarding and, and for Steam in general as what do we want to do and who do we want to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's still, I mean, I, I've never, before Steam, I've never really been a, a social media user other than for a few bits of my work. I use Twitter and stuff. Mm -hmm. Facebook, I, I I have an account, I believe, but I haven't used it for donkey's years. Things like uh, WhatsApp, I've never used. Instagram, I've never used. So it's it's new territory to me. So you know, Steam is my social media. More recently, I've started to have a little go with Twitter, um, a teeny little go, but um, that, that's interesting to use and and learn how people use Twitter. Um, uh, and sometimes you know you you can find some good stuff in there. Whether it's all true, of course, is another matter, and you've got right. to learn to, to filter it out. And and, and sometimes it, the the sort of variance. I mean, the, the, the going back to the coronavirus, I, I find it quite funny because I've got the one of the people I'm following is the official uh, People's Daily feed from China, uh, and it's fascinating how they're doing it because they're putting out you know the, the the measured information about coronavirus. But then in between it, they'll sort of have a, a, a little tweet about a dancing panda bear. Uh, and it's like, what? You know, <laughs> just, and they obviously say, oh, don't make it all dark and gloomy. So and then they had a, uh, some children doing kung fu and one kid holding his breakfast cup with his foot or something. Like that. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, OK. And, and it, it's just weird. It's like, yeah, I, I'm looking at this for coronavirus, but I guess you're going to put that in for your audience as well. <laughs> and, and that sort of sums up social media that is that is exactly random and a haphazard and whether it's true or not who knows um 
but it, it's it's you know the joy of social media. That's half the reason why I started. Th- that's half the reason why I wanted to have a show called the Steaming Pile because, really, this is a, it's a global blockchain. It's a global community, and I would look at my feed before I started like really kind of diving in and and paying attention. I would look at my feed and I'm like, this is a steaming pile. Like I can't make heads or tails. Like uh, you would have some that are eloquent, well written. You have others that are just like, I don't know what this guy is talking about. And you have others where it's like, this is total plagiarism. And you just, you look at it and you're like, ah. I think it's really evening out though. I think even after last year, uh, the hard fork from last year and things like that, it's, it's definitely way different uh, than it was when I first got on board. And I think yeah. you were on board, you were on board way before me, right? Uh, yeah, I started June 2017, so. June 2017. I was October 2017, but then I really didn't start doing, paying attention until I would say April of 2018. Yeah. So, it, it, it's. I mean, what? One of the saddest things is all the people that have left. Um, and, and totally by chance, the other day, I I, I, I used. I don't use YouTube to. Uh, I don't have an open channel. I just use it for the backups of when I put out show broadcasts. Mm-hmm. And uh, I happened onto it. I'd logged into it, and I was looking back through my old um, uh, recordings, and I went right back to the beginning. And I was trying to find one of the people that had been on the show that I'd found had a YouTube channel by chance. And I thought I'll go back and sort of try and grab him back onto Steam, maybe see if he's interested. And uh, I found him. I had to scroll right back to the beginning because I forgot he was on the very first show that I did on MSP. Huh. Uh, and that, by chance, on the day I was looking, was exactly two years later, 26th of January. Wow. And um, so then I, I thought, well, I'll make a story out of that because it was, it was interesting rather than sort of go off and do what I was doing. Uh, two things of interest was, one, Steam was at $6.35. So when I launched my, <laughs> when I launched my show, and I, I was like, ah, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't even like a dollar. It was at six dollars thirty-five, and that sort of rubs the salt in. And uh, <laughs> the second thing was of of the four people that the guests I had on that first show, all four had stopped using Steam uh, some months ago for various reasons. Um, yeah. And uh, one by chance, just a couple of days ago, Geordie Prepper had popped up and saying, "Hey, I'm coming back." He hasn't posted since, but. Uh, that was the sad thing with uh, I, I think I interviewed somewhere approaching 500 people and the vast majority are no longer on Steam which is really sad because when I look back through the the interviews uh, particularly when you sort of have someone on a show the same you know when you have people on it you, you have a slightly different connection to just mm-hmm. someone going through your feed yep and uh, when they go it's it's really quite sad and it'd be great to try and get them back and I mean that that person I was looking for um, Kevin who um, runs a YouTube channel called Epic Gardening, if I remember rightly. Very, uh, you know, he was doing that before Steam, but in a smaller way. Uh, very nice guy. Excellent content he puts out about various gardening topics. And he's now got, I think it was somewhere like 200,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Wow. Because uh, I'd had the idea, I thought, oh, because I, I came by chance across his YouTube channel again. I thought, I know, I'll go on there and say, hey, you know, why don't you come back to Steam? Yeah. And what's the story you give someone with a 200,000 subscriber YouTube channel to come back to Steam? What What is the story? I can't think of one. <laughs> well, yeah, come back everyone to else, Steam if, get... you're, if you've gotten to this point and you have some answers, put them in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, there's yeah, so come many back users here, you can on have those platforms. 20 views if you're lucky and uh, you might earn $3. Uh, I don't know what you're doing on a, a 200,000 channel on youtube but i would i would imagine it's you know a hundred dollars a show or something like that so yeah. um you know what what's the sales pitch and i can't you know i don't know i don't know I don't know. Well, we're here. We're, we're making our way. So as yeah. we're winding down, we got a couple comments from Sergeant Dan. One says he's still trying to find his brand. Um, he's sure that he's sure that some have their own opinion of how they would describe my Steam participation. And then he said, remember Pensive from the early days? Met you at hey, the yes. Steam Star shows and that crew. Yeah, it was uh, Some Cork still and, uh, here, some gone. Yeah, Sir Cork and... Uh, Others of that, 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 those oh, Sir Cork, I found him mildly entertaining when he would go off on his rants. He would really, 
He would really <laughs> yeah. fight with people. I'm like, oh, this is, this is fun. I like that. Once he started, it was a hell of a job to get him to stop. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was partly how I got into doing. Well, I I, I first went along to MSP Waves when uh, Sir Cork was there, and I think there was a little bit of a. Uh, difference of opinion i don't know i never knew the whole story but the week after i i i first moseyed along to find out about it um he left and uh so i i sort of had a little bit of a connection there but i stayed on at msp and uh, then eventually started a, a show there so um, but yeah we should get sergeant dan on here he, he oh yeah come he'll there. come in he'll come in he just got it. And, uh... He he either has to remember when the show is, or we have to just send him the link right before we go on and pray that he's yeah. in front of his Discord. So. Yeah, it'd be cool if you can come on, Sergeant Dan. That'd be cool. All right. Well, I'm going to upload this video. I think this is good for today. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for being here, Pensif. That was this was oh, fun. Was I'm glad fun. to be back good at fun. it. We'll get the yeah. recording up, and we'll be back next Tuesday at the same time. Yeah, we'll. Uh... We'll have a look at that graph seven days from now, John. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> if it will f still fit in the screen. <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Just mosey off down the hardware shirt store or the pharmacy to get those masks now. Oh, my gosh. We should have got uh, some sponsorship links on there, shouldn't we? <laughs> yes, we definitely need to do that now. Get your masks now. All right, everyone, yeah. you guys have a good cool. day. Thank we'll you see that. you Thanks soon. Thanks for coming along, Sergeant Dan, and anyone else listening. It was uh, good fun. So I will look forward to next week. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.